ask them questions. So now is your chance. Please, all speakers, return to the stage. And all questioners, remain in the room. Um, there are microphones here um, in the front of each of these aisles. So if you have a burning question to ask one of our amazing speakers, please come and queue in front of the microphone and ask away. So I think this was a really fantastic session. I didn't organize it, but whoever organized it and picked these speakers, wow, really great. I learned a lot today. Um, thank you all for speaking. And I ask for your So is there anyone that has a question for anyone on the stage?
Yes, but also carbohydrates are really important. And so some of those lipids are coming, our dietary lipids coming from the lipids that are consumed in pollen, but lipids can also be synthesized from consumed carbohydrates. And so actually, um, if they are deficient in, in honey stores, that could also lead to lower levels of stored lipids. And so not just pollen, but it seems like both, um, both the, the pollen and um, the, the carbohydrate um, deficiencies at the end of the season are of concern. So it seems like both actually, both types of supplemental feeding could help with the lipid stores. Um, good, uh, good morning. Um, I'm sure you just a question to say with the use of antibiotics, uh, disturbing the microbiota, uh, the microbiota of the honeybee. Do you think, say, that the widespread use of antibiotics against the fibroids is potentiating the fibroid diseases? So, uh, I'm not an expert in, in this field of uh, EFP and AFP, so in Switzerland we are very restricted in the use of antibiotics, which I think, yeah, it's not, it's, uh, yeah, not so easy to, to answer, but like, I would probably not go for antibiotic treatment, like I would not recommend that. But I think, um, yeah, it's not my main topic, EFP and AFP, so maybe um, yeah, someone else should answer this question. <coughs> Of course, like antibiotics are are harming um, bacteria, so of course they have an effect on them. But there are all these side effects have to be taken into account. So, yeah. <laughs> one more question. Uh, I think several speakers <coughs> mentioned uh, the diversity of pollen that is collected by the honeybee hive, and it's quite easy to see when you look at if you have pollen traps on your hive, you can see that even when the bees are merely in a monoculture. Uh, the, you still get five or six different types of pollen being collected, although at low levels. What I wonder though is whether that diversity is transmitted to the individual bees in the hive uniformly so that they are all getting the benefit of it, or if there are nutritionally deficient individuals because the bees consume the pollen sort of indiscriminately. Speak to that. Um, so I don't have any direct data on that. We don't know. It's a really interesting question. Um, one, I guess, based on what we do know, so bees uh, tend to prefer fresh pollen if, if they're given a choice for that. And if, uh, if they're limited in what's fresh, they may end up consuming predominantly pollen from one or a few sources. And so, uh, you know, thinking about bees across the season again, it could be that at certain times of year, they're more limited in the diversity of diet that they're that they're consuming and thus transmitting, you know, as nurse bees to the larvae that could be leading to some nutritional deficiencies. And so um, whether that might differ, you know, across the season or between different individuals, I don't know. I don't have any direct data on that. Um, but it seems like there could be some potential for, uh, for differences within the season at least. Does that, does that answer your question? It's not quite, but it's close enough. Okay. What I've seen from putting pollen traps on, on colonies, I, I agree so there's definitely, um, even throughout the pollination of the avocados, for example, I did see a big change in diversity of the pollens that were available just from other weeds and other plants in the area. And um, in your question was specifically whether if there is a diversity in, in the pollen source, whether the bees would go for, let's just say, orange instead of yellow, or whether they would go for both. <laughs> And um, I mean, thinking about it from a social perspective, I think um, honeybees are very good at looking after each other. So I don't think they would specifically say, oh, you can only eat this pollen and you can only eat that pollen. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think probably, I mean, I also don't have any data on this, but my guess would be that they would be equally feeding off food sources. And, more diversity in the area which could determine what's available available to the bees. That would be my answer. We have one more question. Okay. Probably a, a general question to maybe the first speaker. Has anyone looked at the fatty acid composition of the lipids or the so the vitalogenin in bees, the individual fatty acids, and rank those against any of the challenges that the bees are facing? 
does one fat ear help things more than another? studying the fatty acids um, and their influence on bees named Shirley Shafir, who's in uh, the Hebrew University in Rehovot. And uh, he's identified, well, we know that there are two essential fatty acids which are important for animals. In insects, it's not so clear that those are essential, but those two are alpha-linolenic and alpha-linoleic acid. And Shirley's work has shown that alpha-linolenic acid is very important for um, for the animal's behavior. So if they don't get enough alpha-linolenic acid in food, they can't learn and remember where to forage, and so they are less efficient foragers. Um, I think his lab is trying to understand the, the relationship or the importance of those two fatty acids in the bee's diet, and uh, I'm not sure if they're looking at disease yet, but it's an open question still um, how much each fatty acid contributes to the, the health of bees. But we know that at least alpha-linolenic is is essential and that the bees can synthesize all other fatty acids. Thanks. Okay, well I'd like to thank our speakers again. It's uh,